A few weeks ago, I got laid off. I signed this severance agreement, which means I have to be careful what I say since there are confidentiality and non-disparagement clauses. But everything I'm gonna tell you today is just the factual truth, sprinkled with some opinions of mine. So please don't sue me. Today, just like every single day for the past few weeks, I'm unemployed. But in order for me to explain exactly what happened, I need to take you to the beginning. This is a story about identity. My identity. In high school, I took web dev and mobile application programming. And for the first time in my life thought, whoa, this stuff is cool. Then I took AP Computer Science and realized this stuff is also hard, but mostly still cool. So when I matriculated at Rice University in 2016, I declared my major as computer science and it never changed. I interned at a big oil and gas company called Schlumberger, then Microsoft, and then a startup in San Francisco called Gusto. I did tech fellowships, I had tech friends, and I was in-house tech consultant for my parents. Being a software engineer was all I knew and all I ever wanted. So when I graduated college, I recruited hard and joined Bolt, a FinTech startup with some of the smartest people I'd ever met. It was COVID, so I was fully remote at my parents' home in Houston, Texas. And remote I'd remain for my three years of tenure. I joined June 2020 and left June 2023, and man, did those three years fly by. When I joined, we were 30-ish engineers, which meant I got thrown into the deep end and worked on some insanely cool projects. I worked hard and got promoted in just over a year. My colleagues were my friends, work brought me fulfillment, and life was really good. And then the recession hit. The job cuts in big tech are piling up. 150,000 tech workers. Which amounts to 6% of its workforce. And like most software businesses, we had layoffs. Each one we were told would be the last that they cut deep enough, but it was never good. We had three official rounds of layoffs, and then some unofficial ones too, hush hush. And that last official round of layoff, the third one, that's the one that got me. But it was so different than the first two. Let me explain. The first and second layoffs were identical. The CEO would message in the general Slack channel announcing the decision. If you were impacted, you'd get a calendar invite called Bolt Restructuring Conversation. And if you were safe, you'd be invited to the town hall later in the day. And so I just lay on the couch with my phone out, constantly refreshing Slack, email, calendar to see if I'd lost access to company accounts. And anytime it glitched or took an extra second to load, I thought it was over for me. But each round of layoff, I survived. It's so weird to use the word survived. And all this while, people were also leaving by choice. Some hit three, four, five years of tenure and were ready to try something different. Others wanted a career break and some were starting families. And slowly, little by little, my coworkers, the OGs, my mentors were no longer at the company. My direct manager switched four times as more and more people left. There were reorgs and a general sense of instability. And morale, well, morale was almost non-existent. But could you blame us? And then one Tuesday, I get a message from a friend at the company. Turns out I missed a town hall that morning. I just lost track of time. And they had announced some news, big news. The PeopleOps team had rolled out a voluntary resignation program, or VRP, which essentially allowed you to leave the company no hard feelings with severance and some benefits. But also, let's be honest, VRP wasn't totally selfless. The company had to cut costs and they had a target number in mind. So if enough people voluntarily left, great, no reduction. If not, some people would be voluntold to take the program. And if they didn't, they'd get laid off anyway in the coming weeks with potentially less favorable severance and benefits. This all happened on Tuesday and the deadline to accept or reject the program was Friday at noon PST. The next couple days are gonna be crazy, so bear with me. And to make this easier, we're gonna call my direct manager, Peter, and my skip manager, so my direct manager's manager, Ian. Ian sets up a meeting with me on Wednesday morning, just to check in. He opts on and he asks me a simple question. Do you wanna stay or do you wanna go? And I say, I wanna stay, let's do this. When that meeting ends, I pick up the phone and call my direct manager, Peter, and I told him I wanna stay. I'm letting you know the same thing, just so everyone's on the same page. And then Peter says, you should take the program. In that moment, I felt blindsided. But this betrayal runs even deeper. You see, a couple months back in March, I started actively looking for new opportunities. So I went out, recruited, and got some really strong offers at some amazing companies. I went to my manager and said, hey, this is my two-week notice. 
And then he did something unexpected. He tried to convince me to stay. Around this exact time period, I'd also learned that there were some pretty serious developments in my health. I was also moving to New York, a new city, and so my personal life was not the most stable. So I was already kind of on the fence, and so when my manager asked me to stay, I was tempted. And then just three weeks later, I was on the chopping block. So this conversation ends, and I am reeling. Emotional, nothing makes sense to me, I have so much anxiety, and you're just, you feel so alone and lost and fearful, and the only thing you want is for the pain to go away. So I took the next couple hours off to calm down, and then I called my manager back. And in a less emotional, more rational state, I basically said, you owe me. I turned down multiple job offers because you asked me to stay, and three weeks later, you wanna let me go? That's not fair. I'm not gonna put up with that. And I guess he could maybe hear it in my voice or because I've been so persistent that he was like, okay, no man, well, let me see what I can do. So he picks up the phone and he calls Ian. So the next day I go into the conversation and before I even have a chance to explain myself, Ian just says, sorry, no man. I talked to Peter. I know you really wanna stay, but we just, we just don't have the headcount for you. There's nothing more to be done, right? No. You fight until you can fight no longer. I say, look, I deserve to stay. And honestly, you all owe me. And I really drilled into that. And so I guess Ian also feels the energy. And so for the rest of Thursday, I get regular updates on Slack. And then finally, he's like, I think things are looking really good. Still not certain, but I think we might have it. And then he calls me Thursday night and I just feel relief. I don't feel happy or even at peace. I just feel relief. So we go out with my friends and I drink and just try to forget. And the whole time I'm thinking, should I actually stay or not? Because now, the choice is mine. So I went back and forth, pros and cons, I made lists and I talked to my friends and all those thoughts of, you'll never get a job again, what if you can't pay rent? They were coming back and they were strong, but I said no. And so it just came down to realizing I was comfortable and I never wanna be comfortable. I grow the most when I'm uncomfortable, when I'm in the unknown, when I'm stressed, when I'm anxious, when I have some fear. And this was an opportunity to just send it, to bet on myself, and I knew 10 years from now, if I looked back, I would never regret taking some time for myself. So Friday morning, I woke up, I texted Ian and said, let's hop on a call. I have like a lump in my throat. <sighs> I feel nauseous. <clears throat> hey, hey, good morning, can you hear me? Cool, yeah, so uh, I wanted to thank you for kind of like yeah. doing everything. It's been a tumultuous couple days. Uh, but I think I've come to the decision that I, I'm gonna take the voluntary severance. And that's my layoff story. From not having a job, to getting it back, to choosing on my own accord, on my terms, to leave. So what's next for me? Well, for the foreseeable future, I'm gonna take a well-deserved break. I also have some things up my sleeve, some big projects upcoming, stay tuned for those. Otherwise, stay safe, take care, and I'll see you very, very soon. Cheers.